now is former acting U.S. Attorney General Matt Whitaker. And Matt, good morning to you. Uh, your thoughts? Good morning. As we're we're going to hear from John Durham himself. Yeah, so the John Durham testimony is going to be fascinating. Obviously, the stuff behind closed doors um, is going to be even more interesting. But as we uh, hear from John Durham, I think we should listen very carefully as to um, whether he puts any color on his decision not to prosecute in any further individuals. There, you know, there's several individuals that I think, you know, were were mentioned in his report uh, that that I'm sure he considered prosecuting, and it'd be interesting to know, you know, why he didn't think he hit the threshold on those in order to bring charges. I, mean, I, I listened to your commentary already when it comes to the classified documents case, but there's yeah. there's obviously the I'm going to say misguided. Uh, uh, situation here with Alvin Bragg and, and the former president. And then you've got this case now in Florida, yeah. but then you've also got Georgia uh, and, and possibly January mm -hmm. 6th when it comes to things that the former president either is or could be yeah. facing. Uh, from a political standpoint, if you look at the polls, he's above 50 percent in the race to be the next president. Yeah, and I think the polls are probably going to stay there, um, no matter whether uh, these additional charges are brought in Georgia or if Jack Smith decides to bring January 6th. Because, you know, what happened in this case is they targeted President Trump. They have been looking to get President Trump since really 2015. They tried to get him with the Russian collusion case. Uh, it was unsuccessful. And, and I think, you know, each one of these cases, if it wasn't Donald Trump, these cases wouldn't be around. They're not, you know, they're not looking to get any other individuals except target Donald Trump. And, you know, each case has its own unique twists and turns, and it's going to have its own unique timeline. But, you know, we should expect that none of this will resolve until after the presidential election in 2024. Well, Amera's poll finding that 56 percent of Americans, the majority being Democrats and independents, mm -hmm. think that he should drop out of the 2024 race. GOP voters, though, that's what I was referencing, they disagree. The same poll, 83 percent of Republicans support Trump's run for president following his indictment. Matt, you know, these are very serious charges, uh, in particular the, the, federal, uh, the federal charges he's facing over, over the documents. Uh, from your legal, st your legal mind, where do you think that that case goes? Well, first of all, they're also unprecedented, and we haven't ever seen uh, the Presidential Records Act interplay with the Espionage Act. It's very interesting how Jack Smith has pled this case um, to try to avoid um, some of the other statutes that may come into play on the classifications of these documents. Um, you know, he seems to have kept it fairly simple. He didn't bring in um, too many, uh, you know, any other uh, uh, classification statutes that would complicate his case. But at the same time, I just think this whole idea of him going to get a protective order that you mentioned earlier is a little, um, uh, you know, I think it just, it, it tries to dirty up President Trump a little more, suggests that he can't be trusted with these documents. Uh, you know, he's trusted for four years with these documents. There's no indications um, that, that serious harm was ever done to our country. And in fact, he needed those documents, uh, you know, to, to be president of the United States. And now that the federal government has them back, uh, you know, any risk that they believed is gone completely. Yeah, well, and now they're asking that any if he views any documents, he has to have a, a lawyer present. Um, Maria was asking Arizona Congressman Andy Biggs about impeaching President Biden yesterday uh, on Sunday Morning Futures. I want you to listen to this. Joe Biden should be impeached. First thing we would do is we should take a, uh, a, a preferred motion to the floor so it'd get priority, and then it goes to the House Judiciary Committee. We do our inquiry, and then we make a recommendation to the entire body. That should be going on uh, forthwith. There's a significant number in our conference that aren't there yet. I'm not sure what's going to take to get them there. You know, Matt, James Comer says that he's got more witnesses to come uh, and that we're going to have more revelations out of his sure. uh, committee investigation. Your thoughts? Yeah. Well, you know, an impeachment obviously is a political proceeding. They're going to need only a majority in the House. They had a hard, you know, they couldn't get, they were 20 votes short of trying to censure, um, uh, you know, Adam Schiff. And so I don't see where an impeachment at this point in time, without more information and without more evidence, can meet the bar of high crimes and misdemeanors against Joe Biden. If it does, then they certainly should do that. Uh, you know, it's going to die in the Senate uh, for lack of, uh, th you know, three quarters vote. But at the same time, 
you know, Andy Biggs uh, and the House Republicans, if that's what they want to pour their priorities and their effort on, I mean, certainly they have the prerogative to do that. I mean, there's a lot of other things uh, in addition to that that they should be focused on and trying to help the American people too. Yeah, Matt, Chris Lenzo is with me here on set. Just got a question for you. So um, in terms sure. of uh, what we've been seeing with former President Trump, I mean, Joe Biden was literally in the exact same situation.